Welcome to the Authority of Love. I'm Greg Williams, and thank you for joining me on the broadcast or the podcast. Maybe you're watching on a video or uh, however you are. Thank you for joining us. I trust you had a great weekend, and thanks again for following along in this journey with us to be our utmost for His highest. As we work through many of the excellent devotionals from Oswald Chambers in the devotional by that same name, my utmost for His highest, rooted in God's Word. By the way, if you're interested and in or around the Lawrenceburg-Anderson County area, I'm doing a marriage series on Wednesday nights for the next 12 weeks at Nineveh Christian Church. Come out and join us at 6.30 every Wednesday evening. It runs through April, all the way through the end of April. I'd love to see you there, meet you. And, um, Lord willing, we'll, we'll continue to grow together in the Lord and in our marriages and families as well. Now, a couple of weeks back, we shared... Uh, or I shared one of the devos that some of you had never thought about, much as I had never considered it when I first began reading these devotionals 30 plus years ago. What our obedience to God may cost others. Today's message revisits that issue and how we can remain obedient regardless of the cost to us or to others. And again, you can find all of the Authority of Love videos and podcasts and articles, many articles at loveandlordship.com, loveandlordship.com, spell it all out, put it together, love and a n d lordship.com, and uh, you can see, get our book there, icon right in the middle of the homepage, click on that. Uh, you can look at the read, watch, or listen tabs, and you get these and many other uh, videos or articles or podcasts, so I uh, appreciate you doing that, appreciate you sharing them. And also the feedback. Love the feedback from those who are uh, growing in the Lord, those who are challenged, even those who disagree. I thank you for that. And we, we can grow together in this. If you would like to do that or you have any questions or comments, contact me at loveandlordship at gmail.com. Loveandlordship at gmail.com. Remember, in Christ's kingdom, obedience is spelled L O V. E. Uh, go look at John 14, 15 and 1 John 5, 2. And there are others, but those are two of the more prominent ones that tell us very plainly. If you love me, God says, Christ says, you will obey or keep my commands. That's what love does. With this in mind, we must remember also that we are given the choice. Free, without free will, there is no love. It is our love that compels us to obey just as Jesus obeyed his Father in following through with death on the cross for our salvation, that is, all who believe in him and walk accordingly. Obedience, i.e. love, cost us. And as I mentioned earlier and in a previous episode, often costs others. Don't allow the cost to cause you to doubt God. Don't allow the cost to keep you from obeying him. He knows best is that is what his commands and calling are for, for our best and for his glory. He created you for his purpose, and that's the only place you'll ever find true fulfillment is in Christ. This only happens as we are willing to obey him in love and trust his outcomes for us and for others. Where are you when it comes to love and obedience to the Lord? Listen as today we look at a message entitled, The Dilemma of of obedience. Now, it's those following along in the, in the uh, hard copy, the print copy of My Utmost for His Highest, or at myutmost.org, we're on January 30th, okay? I know, I know we're a few days ahead of that in the calendar year, but I'm skipping around. I'm moving through chronologically, but I'm not doing all of them. So check out January 30th, The Dilemma of Disobedience. Now, how's that for an encouraging way to look at how we are to respond to our Savior and Lord? I want to be obedient. Thank you for loving me. But there's a dilemma to it. I would much rather hear of the rewards, the blessings, and the positive outcomes to my obedience. Isn't that what most of our churches tend to talk about if they talk about obedience at all? So let's look at where he starts this at in the scripture. 1 Samuel 3.15. Uh, those of you who are, are Bible uh, studiers and scholars, you'll know this right away. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. You know that story from 1 Samuel there where Hannah has prayed and God's given her a son and she committed him to the Lord in the temple and he served under Eli the, the priest and he had a vision and he's scared to show it to Eli. 
let's, let's see what Oswald Chambers has to say. God never speaks to us in startling ways, but in ways that are easy to misunderstand. And we say, oh, I wonder if that is God's voice. Isaiah said that the Lord spoke to him with a strong hand. That is by the pressure of circumstances. Ever done that to you? I know he has to me. Nothing touches our lives, but it is God himself speaking. Do we discern his hand or only mere occurrence? In other words, is it coincidence or is it providence? That's my question. I continue here. Probably the greatest determinant in answering this question is it his hand or merely occurrence? It's whether our focus is on his kingdom or our own little temporal world. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, don't, don't dwell on what is seen because it's only temporal, but dwell on what is unseen because that is eternal. Is your focus there? Jesus said it this way in Matthew 6.33. Seek first my kingdom, my righteousness, and I'll take care of the rest. This is directly related to how much time you spend in his word. In so doing, your first thoughts are then guided by and much more in line with his truth. Check out John 8, 31 and 32. So often we love to quote or hear verse 32, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Because we simply sit in church or occasionally read his word that we know his truth, but the key word is remain or continue in my word. You are my disciples if you remain in my word. It all depends on the habits or disciplines you've developed and continue in. I found it interesting in my own life that as I began walking with the Lord, much of what I determined was of the Lord and His Word was based upon my circumstances, attitude, environment, etc., and ultimately whether I understood and or liked or agreed with what I was hearing or feeling or, or seeing. What about you? As I've matured and still am maturing, I'm learning to follow this advice from the Devo, back to Oswald Chambers. Get into the habit of saying, speak, Lord, and life will become a romance. Every time circumstances press, no matter how much we like or dislike them, be willing to say, speak, Lord. Make time to listen. Chastening is more than a means of discipline. It is meant to, give me the, to get me to the place of saying, speak, Lord. <laughs> And I'll add this, God's discipline, chastening, and yes, even punishment serves a greater and good purpose. Don't run from it, but run to him and he will speak and make himself known. Check out Hebrews 12, 3 through 15 for more on that. I've got some more we'll talk about on down the road with that. And it's in our book as well, The Authority of Love, second edition. Chambers continues, recall the time when God did speak to you. Have you forgotten what he said? Was it Luke eleven thirteen, 13, or was it 1 Thessalonians 5, 23? As we listen, our, our ears get acute. And like Jesus, we shall hear God all the time. Shall I tell my Eli what God has shown to me? That is where the dilemma of obedience comes in. We disobey God by becoming, I've talked about this before, and he talks about it often, Amateur providences. I'm a little God here. I'm a shield, Eli. The best people that we know or that I know. God did not tell Samuel to tell Eli. He had to decide that for himself. God's call to you may hurt or make it difficult for your Eli. As we know from the story, it was a very difficult message that God had given Samuel regarding Eli and his sons. Go back and read that in 1 Samuel 3. But if you try to prevent the suffering in another life, it will prove an obstruction between your soul and God. It is at your own peril that you prevent the cutting off of the right hand or the plucking out of the eye. Now, that's, those are harsh words. Jesus spoke them in Matthew, but we still got to heed them. Never ask the advice of another about anything God makes you decide before him. If you ask advice, you will nearly always side with Satan Immediately, I conferred not with flesh and blood. Paul said this about, about his conversion. We talk about this in our book, The Authority of Love, the second edition. Remember, if you're looking for it, type out second, S-E-C-O-N-D, okay? How God has given us the flesh with its feelings and emotions, but because sin has corrupted our flesh, every one of us, we should never be guided by it, but instead seek the word and spirit in every decision. 
If you are willing to go to his word and wait patiently, he will always give you an answer. I didn't say you'd always like the answer, but he will answer. And the more you grow and trust him, you will find that it's always right and good. What has been your experience as you've been willing to obey God and seek him and his will above all else? What has it cost you? How has he blessed you in your obedience despite the cost? What has it cost others? Have you been willing to follow through despite these costs and see how God works? Finally, based on your continued obedience or your conferring with flesh and blood and subsequent disobedience, how has your faith grown or how has it diminished based upon your loving obedience or lack thereof? Oswald Chambers, in Food for Thought, as we close out, state, he states it this way. The attitude of a Christian towards the providential order, God's covenant order, we talk about the lot in our book, in which he is placed the, 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 the Christian is placed is to recognize that God is behind it for purposes of his own. In our book, I quote Dr. Tony Evans, who says it like this, our God is a covenant-making and covenant-keeping God, and every covenant has an order. I then go on to say in the book in so many words, are you willing to be obedient to follow God's covenant order found in his word? Or do you rearrange that order and still claim that, claim that Christ is Lord of your life even as you decide to do it differently than what he says? Be willing to be obedient to God and his word no matter what it costs you or others. It is always worth it because he always knows best. Here's our loving action items. Spend time with God and his word, prayer, and listening every day. Begin with the scriptures in this message. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. That's the second step. Number three, as you look back on your walk with the Lord and others, think about and journal what has been the driving factor or factors that led you to obedience or disobedience. Number four, based on those factors, write down what needs to change in your life to move from disobedience to obedience regardless of the cost to you or others. And five, track your obedience or disobedience. Pay attention to it and the impact it has on your maturity or immaturity in your faith, in your walk with the Lord. Now be sure to join us tomorrow as we continue down this path of obedience and discipleship and what that means as we walk out our relationship with Christ as Lord. Be sure to invite family, friends, loved ones, even enemies. We all need to hear this message of the gospel and the salvation and sanctification. Christ not only saved us, but he, sa he saved us to set us apart for his purposes and for his kingdom and glory. So invite them to join us. Um, again, you can go to loveandlordship.com and find out more there, loveandlordship.com. Read, listen, watch. Those tabs are available. Uh, you can click on the Vimeo tab near the bottom and find videos. Click on the Podbean tab and find uh, uh, podcast uh, audios. And we thank you for doing that. If you'd like to give, if the Lord's leading you to do that, you find us to be a faithful kingdom ministry. Click on the Give tab near the upper right. Take you a minute or so. You can give one time or ongoing monthly gifts that are very helpful. We certainly appreciate, greatly appreciate every gift and every donation is completely tax deductible. So thank you again for joining us. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Now make it a great day and God bless in Christ. Stay tuned for Bill Reeser, my good friend, and his encounter message. I, I, I at 12 or immediately following i'm sorry immediately following and then greg horn and hope is here at 12:45 i'm greg williams and you're listening to the authority of love